I'm joined now by Congresswoman Haley Stevens, a Democrat from Michigan and a surrogate for the Biden-Harris campaign. Congresswoman, thank you for being here. So let's go big picture. How does President Biden put the winning coalition back together and win in Michigan again? Well, that's what the Biden campaign is working on every single day with a commitment to open 30 offices by the end of this month. Uh, last month, we opened an office in Oakland County to, to great fanfare. They're working on that coalition building. They're running a fun, inclusive, uh, compassionate oriented campaign that is firing people up. And most importantly, they're not taking anything for granted. Joe Biden is a consistent, steady, successful leader who has delivered on his promises time and time again. And he has a continued vision for this country. He wants to continue to tackle gun violence. He wants to continue to deliver for our clean energy economy. And most importantly for voters in Michigan, he wants to stand up for women's rights. He wants to codify Roe. We can trust Joe Biden to do that. We certainly cannot go back to Donald Trump and his plan to implement a six week abortion ban and, and take this country backwards. It's not gonna work. It didn't work in 2020, and it's certainly not gonna work in 2024. What message do you think the president received from the more than 100,000 Michiganders who voted uncommitted in the primary last month? And what does he intend to do to win those folks back? Well, certainly the president understands that people have a right to exercise their opinion and their voice. And you can't have a better leader than Joe Biden in this moment because he's a listener and he's a leader at the same time. And so he's meeting people with the compassion and the dedication that they deserve on a very complicated and tough issue. There's no doubt a, a tremendous amount of pain in both our Arab and Jewish community since October 7th. Everybody wants to see war end and war not go on. Uh, it, it's harrowing to watch the images and see this go on day to day. And I believe that Joe Biden has a plan. Uh, and he spoke about that very clearly in the State of the Union, about his dedication to providing humanitarian support and also continuing to stand by our, our longstanding ally, which is which is Israel. And Joe Biden's record is very clear on that front. Donald well, Trump, he does jumps it need all to be, over the page. I, I don't dispute that last point, but I will ask, I mean, is, is listening enough? I mean, these Arab American voters are really angry in a lot of cases. I mean, the idea that the president has listened compassionately does not seem to be enough to win over somebody who's going to go out in the cold and, and write down uncommitted as a message to him specifically that this isn't working. That's a great follow up question. And look, it's responsible listening and it's also action oriented listening. It, it's not just paying lip service. Uh, it is hearing directly uh, from voters and from constituencies. And, and look, the, the foreign policy approach that the Biden administration has uh, been taking, and, and certainly we've heard this from Jake Sullivan, it has been transparent. Uh, it has been consistent. And, and also, it has been very communicative. So what we're not going to see is Joe Biden take a 180 uh, degree uh, turn in, in another direction. But what he is doing is doubling down on the commitment to humanitarian support and to aid. He is trying to work with Congress on the right package. I don't think that you're gonna see this president sign something that doesn't include that humanitarian aid, which in a lot of my conversations with stakeholders and folks on the ground, that is absolutely essential here, right? We have a failed state in Hamas and, the, uh, and their leadership, that has truly endangered and hurt people in Gaza. We all know that needs to go. We need to rebuild. You see the Biden administration putting forward a plan to rebuild and again, not taking anything for granted. And this is this is one issue that, that has large ramifications in the state of Michigan. But look at how Joe Biden has delivered for our manufacturing economy. We had six automotive plants shutter under Donald Trump, one here in Michigan. And yet we've had 350,000 manufacturing jobs in just my state alone get created under Joe Biden. I got manufacturing crawling crawling out the, the uh, you know all over our, our state here in Oakland County to mid Michigan from solar to battery to obviously automotive a record automotive contract uh cut and something that Joe Biden endorsed and supported along the way standing by our UAW workers. Don't take that stuff for granted because you you see how Joe Biden 
is communicating and leading at the same time. I'm hearing you say that this state even will be decided by many more issues than just this war. You mentioned the UAW workers. I'm curious about that endorsement that the president got from the UAW. Has he done enough to communicate uh, both the value of that endorsement and the idea that he is specifically pro-worker, not just sort of pro-union conceptually, to the degree you see a difference between those things? Well, it, it was certainly a ringing moment to see UAW President Sean Fain at the State of the Union. I was certainly very proud uh, to, to see that. And what is going to take place over these next six to seven months with the, with the Biden campaign is work in the union halls. It's not just big rallies. You saw the president uh, come into Michigan, come to Region 1 here, uh, UAW Region 1 uh, over in Macomb County, not holding a big rally, but engaging with workers, learning their stories, winning over their votes. It's those nooks and crannies that are so deeply important. Yes, people love to go to a political rally. You see participation on that front, but they also want to know who they're voting for. They want to connect with uh, uh, their their president and they want to hear their vi his, his vision. And so I believe that this campaign is doing this. And 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 frankly, I'm a part of it. And we're, we're getting into the weeds here and that's going to pay dividends in the neighborhoods, the precinct work, the 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 voter operation work that's going to be so critical to November. Just wait and see, because I got to bet that my district's turning out the most number of Democratic votes of any congressional district in 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 the state. I got a little competition going All on right. with my colleague Debbie Dingle. So <laughs> we will mark this tape for that moment and check it in, in six or seven months now. Congresswoman Haley Stevens, thank, thank you. you for coming on. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.